morning everyone and welcome to my craft room. Uh, my name is Julianne Richards and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator in southern Tasmania. Just bear with me, I'm checking my sound, it seems right. Everything should stop wobbling now when I stop playing with my camera um, mount. But anyway, let's see how we go. Uh, as I say, my name is Julianne Richards and I'm a stamping up demonstrator in southern Tasmania. Um, this is day five? Five, yes, day five of my um, 12 Days of Christmas challenge. It's a bit of a challenge to myself to see if I can think of 12 Christmas craft ideas. It's also a bit of a challenge to my viewers to have to put up with me every day for 12 days. So thanks to everyone who is coming along for the ride. Just forgive me for a second. I realised just before I went on air that my phone was slightly low in charge. So I've brought my um, power bank into the picture and I've got cords everywhere where I probably wouldn't normally have cords. So I'm just trying to work out the best place for them. Anyway, oh, we've got a few jumping on already. Thanks, guys. It's great to see you. Uh, anyway, today I'm going back to what has become a old favourite of mine in a couple of respects. It's the Poinsettia Petals um, stamp set and dies. We've used the dies a fair bit the last few uh, videos. Um, uh, day one, I think I used the dies. Today I'm going to actually use the stamp set. So if you were thinking to yourself, oh well, I don't need to buy the stamp set, I'll just buy the dies. Um, today, hopefully, I will... Um, prove you wrong and you'll pop out and get the dies as well. Yes, Sally Mansfield, I'm talking to you. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I'm going to use the dies today and I'm going to also use this beautiful, and I just can't touch, I can't stop touching it. It's like, um, it just attracts me, this beautiful, I'm going to make it all grotty and dirty, um, beautiful plush um, specialty paper that comes with the poinsettia suite. It's just glorious. It's actually got a slight velvety sort of feel to it which um, is just like if you're anything like me you like to touch things I can't walk past a line of trees or something you know without sort of reaching out and touching and and this is the same see I, I've started already and I can't help myself um Kay Kay good, good morning wet yes it's very wet in Hobart as well Kay so I think we've got the same front it's coming in from from your way and down through the northwest of Tassie to through to me so yes we've had rain good solid rain for at least two days hoping for a bit of a let up this afternoon and tomorrow so I can get some washing done okay so enough of the news forecast um yes so we're going to make this card here as I say um I'm using the stamp set this time so well, let's get started I've got everything cut again so you guys don't have to hang around for ages and ages and I'll just show you what I've got I've got my normal card base um eight and a quarter by five and three quarters um, scored in the middle so that's our normal and that's in uh, very vin uh, whisper white thick cardstock always good for the structure of of our card bases I then have another panel of um, whisper white but this time it's just plain whisper white um, cardstock and it's cut an eighth of an inch smaller than our card base so it would be uh, four inches by uh, th uh, five and five eighths and then I have this beautiful um, specialty paper and that's actually cut another eighth of an inch smaller than the the layer. So that would be three and seven eighths by um, five and three quarters. No, five and a half. I'll put all the measurements in the comments anyway, guys, don't panic. Um, what are you, Margie's running in, rubbing in that she's got sunshine. Thank you, Margie. I told you I'm coming up your way. I'm going to sort of live, move, move up your way during the winter, come back down here in the summer. Um, okay, so here we go. So that's our card base there. Then what I've got, um, I've got all my poinsettias all stamped and die cut out. But I will stamp them for you just to show what you need and so you can see these lovely images. So I'm bringing in my foam mat because this is a photopolymer stamp set and I find to get good coverage on the stamps with these stamp sets, you do need to have a foam mat underneath just to give it a bit of a bit of um, a bit of support so I've got a piece of whisper white cardstock here relatively large for my scraps I usually have small scraps and I've got everything all blocked up so so this is the first one of our poinsettia the um, the flower so it sort of obviously has three stamps yeah three stamps of 
reducing size. Wow, so many people jumped on. That's so great to see you all. Thanks for um, for joining us. And uh, please, if you're you know watching from somewhere exotic, like I don't know Canberra, because <laughs> I saw Jan was on there. Please uh, let me know. Forgive the jiggling. So there is our first image, the nice big large one. And we'll go down in sizes. You might tell me if I've got my cameras a bit wonky there. I think I'm a little bit off center. So just let me even that up a little bit. I can't stand things that are not straight. <laughs> it's a bit of an obsession with me. Okay, so there we go. Shirley, Shirley, you win so far. Hello from Texas. That's definitely exotic as far as the little girl from southern Tassie is concerned. There we go. So that's our middle size image. And here is our small image. And once I've stamped all these, I'm actually going to uh, colour them with uh, blends. You can use markers or textures or pencils whatever your colouring poison happens to be. So there's our three flowers. So we will colour these and die cut them and then layer them up so they'll form the, the sort of composite flower, which is really, really nice. And then there's a small leaf and a larger leaf. So this is the small one. I think the, the size difference isn't that huge, but one is definitely smaller. So I'm going to do those as well. As I say, I've already coloured and die cut a lot of these, so but I wanted you to see the images, which is easier when they're in black and white. Okay, so that's the two leaves, the three flowers, and they've got this little branch with some berries on it, which I assume are sort of like holly berries or something. And I'm going to do two of these. One. And that's it as far as the stamping is concerned. So um, if I was here on my own without the myriads watching me, I would probably just, I would now get my blends and um, colour those in uh, and cut, die cut them. But as I say, I've done that already. So come away from there. Okay, well, I've done most of them. So here we are. So there's the large one and the small one. And I will colour one, just so that you know. I can show you what I've done with the blends. So there they are, all pretty and perfect. Well, almost. And this one here is the medium-sized one, and I'm just going to colour that one for you. I've got to remember. I've got everything out this morning except my blends. So I've got dark real red and light real red. And my colour lifter. Basically, that's what I need. For these little flowers so what I'm gonna do is take my dark real red I'm gonna color in probably 90% oh, of the flower with the dark real red so most of the petal except for probably a what eighth of an inch around the very tip around the edges You'll see what I mean. I actually have um, been watching a few or looking at a few Pinterest posts where people have sort of basically left the colouring in. They do quite a, well, from my point of view, a scrappy point of view uh, sort of job. They sort of don't, you know, don't um, go right up to the edges and they leave them quite um, ragged and actually it looks quite effective so I might have to give that a go fight my obsessive nature and actually try and um, try that out probably in private and then show you sort of like I did it like I've been doing it all along anyway so this is the right the light red and I'm just going to take that and finish the edges of the flower, their petals, with the light red. And then blend it back in. And apologies if that's jiggling a tiny bit. 
one of these days my husband will watch these videos and realize that I need a new well I need a new table and I need a new floor the table might be easier to handle than the floor Stephen if you ever watch these videos I need a new table get some of those tools out that he spent thousands of dollars over the last few years telling me that he's getting ready for retirement joke just likes to spend money on tools okay so I think this is the last one yep just blend that in a little bit cool okay so that's the last of our flowers and then what I said I'll bring my color lifter in I don't know if you guys have seen this one you can use it to um, clean up your mistakes if you make them but you can also use it so I just bring it in and look the, the effect is probably so so subtle that probably only another card maker would see it but we know it's there I'm just going to bring it in around the edges just to give it even a lighter slightly lighter look than the light real red who have we got on now now Annette here hi thanks for joining me Annette So subtle, I can't even remember where I've done that one already. I might have done that one already. I need to pay more attention. Okay, that'll do. Okay, so I'll just bring that one up a little bit closer so you can see. Um, so you can see that that colour lifter has sort of brought those those colours even slightly light, lighter than the light red. Okay, so let's do some putting together. Okay. Let me bring my other one into in so I can see it. Let's see, make sure I do it right. Okay, so we're going to layer up our card. I'm going to pop the um, the plush paper on top of the layer of Whisper White. I'm going to use my snail adhesive on this one. Just find it a little bit easier than glue with the vellum. Remember when you're using Stamping Up's new adhesive. A new snail um, to give it a little flick at the end so that the so that the um the, the the gluey stuff doesn't disappear down the down the barrel of the of the um dispenser I had a lot of people asking about that okay so there we have our beautiful plush velvety paper on there I've actually got a little bit crooked and that's the one thing with a snail you can't there's no forgiving no wiggle room then I'm going to mount all of that on dimensionals onto my card base so this is a landscape card rather than the usual portrait I'm just going to use the end of these dimensionals waste not what not Just going to add dimensionals to the back. I actually quite like using the ends of the dimensionals because they're actually longer and they'll actually sort of support more than just the single dimensional. so I don't droop oh, let's just put it all out there we'll do two in the middle I'm feeling extravagant today oh, and even more good morning Sue thanks for joining me hope you're well there we go wow really put the boat out today Lots and lots of dimensionals. I'm usually a bit of a scrounge, scrooge with them. And I'm just going to mount this onto my card base, which I've popped down somewhere over there. Oh, cut my fingernails. It wasn't a good time to cut my fingernails. Can't get my dimensionals off. 
Uh, Sue says, yes, I am on holidays. I've got this week. I had three days off last week and I've got this full week off. And then I don't go back till the Wednesday next week. So in, in effect, I've had two weeks off, but I spread it over three weeks. Um, just so I wasn't away for two full weeks because of the position I sort of hold. It was better for everyone. And it means I only have two short weeks, one at the beginning and one at the end. So that's pretty good. So I'm going to try and get this one straight. And there we are. So that's sort of all mounted up there and I like that sort of the extra depth you get with with the, um, the dimensionals behind there. So I might pop that one away briefly and I'll bring in all the bits and bobs that we've coloured in and we'll layer up this little flower, this poinsettia. I'm just going to pop a wee touch of glue onto the back, onto the centre of each of the flowers. Now, if you have the dies, when you're die cutting these, you could actually use the little, um, there's a little part of the dies that actually gives you a, an embossed vein down the centre of each of these little flowers. So, where is it? And if you watched my last videos, you would have seen it. So, yes, this little die here, you slip it into the, into the, um, the cutout die. So, this one. You slip it into there and it actually gives you a little vein down the middle of your petal um, which is really 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 nice but um, I didn't think to do it with this lot so I, I won't but it basically you that can then make sure I don't lose anything you can then give these a little bit of a curl just to make them look a little bit more natural but I, I'm leaving these ones flat okay so this is our last layer and as you can see there I've actually um, colored in the little um, stamens in the middle there um, so that uh, is uh, mango melody uh, blend that I've used for that just so you know there we are so that's our little flower there so I'm going to bring back the card base I'm going to pop the flower again up on dimensionals really going mad on these dimensionals today so just one, don't get too crazy, in the centre and position that little flower just in that bottom left hand corner. Just like that. And the dimensionals stick really well to the uh, plush so there's no worries with that. What I'm going to do is then bring in our leaves. I'm going to Pop them up and under our flower, just with some glue. One up there. This is getting to be my standard configuration. One coming out to the side. It just lends itself to it so well. And then my little berries. Just going to pop them up and under as well. one maybe wobbling a bit there we go so it'll be fine when it dries it's just that the glue has that wonderful oh, give to it okay so that's fairly pretty in itself I I think I'm going to do a um, going to do my sentiment in white embossing powder on black and I definitely had a piece of black that I bought out to be for the very... Oh, and it's fallen on the floor. Okay, that's what you want to do. Okay, so here I have a scrap of black um, uh, cardstock. I've got my embossing powder, my little card and my verse mark. And here I've got the Merry Christmas um, sentiment. Might move some things away because it's not a bit dangerous with embossing powder. Okay, so I'm going to 
the reverse mark on our sentiment stamp. As you know, you won't be able to see a thing because that's the magic of it. Because verse mark is clearing, you can't see anything until the magic happens. So here's my white embossing powder. Just pop that on there. Trouble is, you've got to remember how long it is. Yep, that's it. And how high. Okay, so that's pretty good. So there you can see we've got our Merry Christmas. I'm just going to bring in my heat gun. Excuse the noise. I'm just going to heat that. So it's just turning now. I don't know if you can actually see that as the sort of off-white turns really, really nice and bright white. That's the magic of heat embossing. That was pretty quick. Make sure it's all done. Looks like it. Okay, I'll get rid of this before we have an embossing powder incident which wouldn't be the first one i think once i actually tipped a whole bottle a whole container of, of gold embossing ink into my lap while i was doing something and it was oh it was so bad and so then i sort of scraped it off my lap and back into the box and back into the container and every time i gold embossed i um every time i gold embossed it was bits of fluff <laughs> which is it wasn't very successful so needless to say i bought some new embossing powder but uh, yes that was the embossing incident of 2019 okay so i'm going to just cut this out around following the contours of the of the sentiment i'm doing that because i don't want to cover over too much of our beautiful um, too much of our beautiful um, plush um, plush the specialty paper so just following it around a little bit of freehand this scares the used to scare the willies out of me doing doing this I know my class ladies tend to balk at it a little bit but really, you can't go too wrong. Well, you can, but you can always do another one. Apologies for the silence. I'm sort of trying to concentrate here. Thank you so much, you guys, for watching. Whatever time it is, wherever you are. I was a bit of struggling to get here this morning. I think the first morning after daylight savings is okay. It's a Sunday morning and you don't really have to be anywhere. Unless you're a church goer and you're probably used to it. But um, the second morning always seems to be the when the reality of it sets in that you've lost that hour's sleep. And that was my reality this morning. Okay. So I'm actually still standing here in my pyjamas. With my Ugg boots on. Haven't done my hair. Haven't brushed my teeth. And thankfully you don't have to see it. Okay, so there's my Merry Christmas all cut out in its glory. I'm going to bring back our card base. Our card. It's past being a base now, isn't it? I'm going to bring in some small dimensionals. And... Just pop that up. As much as they're fiddly, I don't mind using lots of, lots of um, small dimensionals. <clears throat> Excuse my voice. 
because um, they don't seem to I don't seem to go through them quite as fast I suppose because they're smaller okay so I'm going to pop that Merry Christmas just slightly over that leaf and nestled in under that um, under that petal there just try and keep it straight You're about to knock on my door. Are you really? Or is that to say you're going to come and try and do some crafting with me? <laughs> Don't knock on my door because everything wobbles. You're very welcome to knock on my do door, Sue Clements. Very, 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 very welcome to. All right. Okay. So that is, that's pretty, pretty good. Well, if I say so myself, I'm going to give it the compulsory bling. The compulsory grist Christmas bling. So what I thought I would do is bring in the basic rhinestones and pop those around. So I've got a nice big one here and pop that up here. I'm trying to find somewhere where I can actually stick it to the um, stick it to the. I want to put it there. I'm assuming it's going to stick to the to the plush okay <laughs> no Sue don't do that I've got uh, Sue says she's gonna scare me in my PJs yeah it would be scary more scary for you I should think than me I wear very old ratty PJs um, the man who comes to deliver my stamping up boxes who, who actually knows this address quite well now and knows to ask for me by name he often sees me more often than not in my pajamas so um, yes He's quite scared, I can tell sometimes. Okay, so there is my bling. Ta-da! So that's pretty pretty nice, I think. But you know, when you're working with the best quality um, craft products, you, know, you, you, can, you can produce some pretty spectacular results. Okay, so for the inside, I thought, and I didn't do this in my other card, so the other card is nude inside. So this is um, this is uncharted territory, but should never have nude cards, I'm told. So what I thought I would do for the inside is bring in this other little stamp here, which has actually got all three layers of the of the flower already in one, so it's already made up, so you don't have to layer it like the front one. So I'll bring that in. On a block. And I thought just in what, what like ink do I want to use? I might try it in real red. Just real red on the front. So if I try it on real red, oh, this might be a disaster, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So it's definitely far too strong to do um first generation so what I'll do is I'll get a scrap a scrap of paper and I'll stamp it off twice I think I should bring in my mat again and I'm just going to pop that down in the corner yeah that's good I don't mind that at all. That's worked out well. Just bring that down in the corner. Just for some nudie, no nudies. That will make some... Oh, yeah. Well, what I actually tend to do these days... Um, Kay has said that um, somebody will love this card when they get it. I actually send to, tend to send my cards to... Um, apart from family. I, make, I haven't got that large a family and I make so many cards. I tend to send them to my customers and to... Um, the people who do my classes and things so a bit of a gratuitous plug but if you ever buy anything from me or um, do one of my classes um, you'd likely to score one of these in your parcel as a thank you so what sentiment am I going to use inside so we've got happy, Merry Christmas on the outside um, um, what 
Well, may magic and wonder bloom this holiday because we do have a bloom on the front which is quite appropriate so I'll do this one yes so basically every month I do at least one class by mail so if you live in Australia and you'd like to do one of my classes by mail I've got October up at the moment which is Doves of Hope um, and then next month I think I'm going to do I haven't quite worked out November yet, but I think I'm going to do the wreaths, the arrange a wreath. And I will probably include in that a couple of the um, fridge magnet slash Christmas decorations that I did in a video here a while ago. So if you're interested in that, pop over to my Facebook page and uh, or you're in my Facebook page, but pop onto the f and see the posts for those. So November will be announced soon, as soon as I can get this. 12 days of Christmas out of the way I'll then start looking at my November class by mail so for the price depending on which level you go for you get the cardstock all cut dimensionals um, ribbon embellishments everything you need to create six cards and that's two of three designs so yeah, so whatever designs I come up with for November I'll pop them on my Facebook page um, as soon as I do because I'm usually so excited once I settle on the um, the uh, once I settle on the um, designs I have, I have to share them straight away I'm not very good at the big reveal anyway that's fine okay so I think that one's sorry here's me cleaning up and self-promoting anyway so there is our card for today this is card number five as I say, it uses the beautiful plush paper, which has got picked up some fluff there. Um, the beautiful plush, I might leave it on the black. It looks quite good against the black. Um, so uh, the beautiful uh, poinsettia petals stamp set, a bit of embossing, some bling, and that plush. You've just got to get that plush. Just buy it and just have it to feel. It's just glorious. Anyway, so if you live in Australia and don't have an active demonstrator, please consider um, <clears throat> consider me as your demonstrator. Drop me a line if you have any questions. Uh, it would be great to um, to chat to you about these products and, and card making in general. So I can see some people coming on now at the very end. Hi, Linda. Uh, hi, Marjorie. Uh, please go back and watch the replay. Unless you can, there you are. There's the finished card. You could probably work it out. Anyway, so as I say, great to talk to you all. Great to see you all on. Um, thanks very much. And I have got, um, what have I got? Day six tomorrow. I think we might go away from flowers. We might go to something a little bit more, a little bit more fun, a little bit more um, contemporary for tomorrow's project. So anyway, um, hope to see a lot of you then. Uh, have a great Monday. Have a great Sunday evening, wherever you're watching from. And I will chat to you all next time.